Amen. Uh, pastor is none other than the Bishop Terry Jones. Our first lady is Charlotte Jones. Amen. We're so glad that you decided to tune in and worship with us on this morning. Amen. We just come to give God praise. Thank you. 
what he has done and for what he's going to do. It is marvelous, it is marvelous in our eyes that we give him praise, we give him glory, and we give him honor today. Some of his writers said, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, my enemies would have swallowed me up, but the Lord was on my side. And we give him praise, we give him glory, and we give him honor today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We thank God. The first lady this morning, we thank God Amen. for her and praise God for the caring and to all of the ministers and to all of the saints of the Most High God. We give the Lord praise and honor on today. And so we thank Him for being in the house of worship today. Amen. We are under some circumstances uh, today because of the coronavirus that uh, has hit our great nation and reports of cases, uh, I believe, have been found in the majority of the states. And our uh, the governor of this great state has uh, asked that we made it all that we have uh, no more than 25 people. And so this is a great thing because the Lord is in charge of all. Amen. And we praise him today and we give him all of the honor and all of the praise. I want to say to those who are watching us, our members, as well as our followers today that we uh, have a different format uh, today. Our giving will be uh, by online and uh, PayPal. Uh, so we, we want to encourage everyone to sow into the ministry. Amen. Life must go on and we must continue um, to be supportive of the ministry. So I'm asking everyone who is watching us today to be a tither, a sower in the kingdom of God. Amen. What you do for Christ will last. I also want to say that many follow our ministry from afar. The Bible says that Peter followed Christ from afar. We, if we're going to follow, we need to follow closely. Amen. It is in our giving that causes us to be connected to uh, that in which uh, we would be connected, uh, that which we uh, enjoy, that which we have faith in. We have trust in. And so therefore, even when we look at the model of the United States of America, we will see that the citizens are noted as citizens, as taxpayers. Amen. And this is why you will hear such verbiage as uh, how the government is, is spending taxpayers' dollars. Amen. This is what connects us and makes us uh, connected to, uh, praise God, the United States of America is our uh, paying of taxes. You know, Jesus said, uh, render unto Caesar what is due Caesar, and unto God what is due God. And so therefore, it is through our money that we connect, because many times we will give the people as as the old folks say, we'll give them the shirt off of our back. But when it comes to our money, we hold on to it. Because money is precious. Uh, money is by means in which we can uh, buy food and how we pay our bills and so on and so forth. And so mentally, uh, our money uh, is great uh, to us. But God 
should be greater. And any time that we can give great to greater, amen, we have fulfilled a great responsibility and we thank God for it. So I am encouraging everyone who is watching us today uh, by this telecast that you would sow. Don't allow the, the Lord's house to go lacking. We cannot congregate as we have in the past uh, right now, but still, amen, the ministry must go on. And I thank God for this technological age that we're in to where that we can come into your home while standing uh, outside of the home. We can we can come right where you are to your hospital bed, to, to even your job. Thank God, thank God, thank God for the release of such technology because all good and perfect gifts come from above. And so we want to take advantage of that. And so I'm urging everyone, do your part. Don't believe or think that someone else is going to do it. Uh, you do. Amen. And therefore, we will not have any lack in the body of Christ. Thank God for you today. So I need you to take your devices and, and start sewing now. Start sewing now. Start sewing now. Take your devices and go to PayPal. And we have other things that are set up. But we want you to go and uh, sew into the ministry. Amen. Today the word of the Lord will be coming to us from the book of of Psalms 137. Psalms 137 and verse 1 through verses number 4. Psalms 137 verses 1 through 4. And this is Israel uh, who has been taken captive. And it says, By the river of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept, when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willow in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And that uh, and they that wasted us required of us mirth. Say, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? I want to talk today about worship. We want to talk about worship today. Father, bless us as only you can. I pray that you will touch those who are viewing us. Touch all of the members, Lord, who could not be here. But Father, we thank you that you told us to obey them that had the rule over us. And Lord, we are complying to the rules, to the law. We just ask you, Lord God, to do, Lord, what you do. And that is great things. Father, we bless you now and we praise you. In Jesus' name, have your way. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Here we find that it is very befitting today, Psalms 137. Because here in America, even in the state of Alabama, our lives have been altered yeah. by a virus. Amen. Something that is unhealthy, something that is life-threatening. And therefore, we are trying to uh, defend ourselves, uh, praise God, by quarantine and being at distances. This is something that is uh, unusual. It is something that is strange. And this is why today we have to understand that in life, things will change. Amen. Some things will change for the worse, but then some things will change for the better. 
what we must realize is that whether it changes for the worse or whether it changes for the better, God is still in control and he is in charge. We have to understand as the believers in Christ Jesus that there is nothing that surprises God nor takes him by surprise. He is God. In other words, he declares the end from the beginning. There is nothing that sneaks up or creeps upon God. There is nothing that the Lord has to make adjustments for because of the ambush of certain circumstances or certain situations. But the Lord is always ahead of what's getting ready to, to happen. Praise God. Before we even had forecasts, we had prophecy. So therefore, the Lord is always ahead of whatever is going to happen. He is the one who gives the prophets the prophecies. Without the prophecies, there would be no prophets. We have to understand this is what the Lord has done. Amen. Praise God. And so when we look at it here today, we have to understand, we have to understand that uh, praise God, the enemy loves to come, loves to come, and he loves to interrupt what we're doing. Yeah. One of the things that we have to understand about the enemy is that the enemy comes to bring about a change of un where we're unfamiliar. Yeah. Right now, we're in a place where we are not familiar. Praise God. We're not familiar with the life changes that have taken overnight. Here we are, uh, cannot go to restaurants. Here we are, uh, we are banned from certain things, praise God. But, but notice here that the Lord uh, begins to talk to uh, the apostle Peter. Uh, and he says unto him, uh, Apostle Peter tells unto the church rather, he said, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials that come to try you. It is something about when we are comfortable with things that we recognize. We are comfortable with things that we are familiar with. We are comfortable with that. And this is what brings our comfort. It is a part of our memory. In other words, it feeds the memory. Uh, notice this right here. Uh, even an animal, a dog that knows you will not bark at you. But a dog that does not recognize you will bark at you. Notice the dog that doesn't bark at you, that, that recognizes you, is comfortable with with you, but a dog that doesn't know you, the stranger uh, makes him or her uneasy. Uh, it's the same thing with the child of God. We, as the people of God, whenever we are put in strange places, whenever we are put in strange situations, whenever strange things happen to us, uh, it disrupts our thinking, it disrupts our comfortability, it disrupts things. Uh, and so therefore, whenever we are not at ourselves, uh, praise God, then we can uh, fall into the modes of panic. We, we fall into the mode of, uh, uh, praise God, of fear. And we fall into the mode of these things. But what God wants us to understand is that He is the Lord our God and He changes not. Uh, things may change around you, but your God will never change. But what I love about this hour, children, is that in this hour, it is not so much the work of the devil as it is the work of the Lord. I want everybody to hear me and understand, praise God, that this is the work of the Lord. Because so many times we can get so comfortable in our routines until our service to God is not pure and not true. 
<laughs> Sometimes we can get so caught up into habits, uh, into rituals, into days, uh, because you have a lot of folk, uh, praise God, who would come to church on Sunday but would not step foot in there Wednesday, or would not come on a Tuesday, or would not come for a week revival. They would not come on a week day. Understand me here. And so my beloved brothers and sisters, uh, what we have to understand is uh, that the enemy is trying to throw us off course by bringing us to the mindset uh, of dealing with strange things. Uh, and so here we see that the devil uh, himself uh, praise God when we look at it the devil himself uh, praise God begins now to deal with Israel uh, and what he does is he brings them uh, captive down to Babylon and here they are away from their place of worship they are from their place of praise God of familiarity and so here they are have been captive sometimes the Lord will allow the enemy uh, to overtake us sometimes you must understand uh, praise God that sometimes the Lord could prevent certain things but he will allow certain to do anything about what we're going through uh, and so we have to understand that praise is always in order because the one that is in control is the one that is allowing, uh, praise God, bad things to happen for our good. Uh, I wish I had about five people right about now who uh, could really testify to the scripture that says, for well, we know that all things were together for the good of them that love the Lord. Somebody ought to let the devil know right now, you might have seen it. Hallelujah, but God is in control of it. And I want to let you know that the coronavirus might have started out trying to kill us. Hallelujah, but before it's over, it'll be working for the Lord. For the Bible said all things work together together for good of them who love the Lord. And I'm so glad today that I love the Lord. And so the children of Israel, praise God, what they are doing is they have now been taken captive. But it is something how children that uh, we must understand and realize uh, that whenever we read the text, uh, uh, we will find out that Israel was besieged uh, or Judah was besieged and they were taken. Uh, this tribe called praise uh, had been taken down into uh, Babylon. Uh, praise God. And when they were taken down into Babylon, uh, the Bible says, if you read the text, uh, in Psalms 137, notice that they took them, uh, but they allowed them to bring their instruments. Uh, notice why would the enemy want you to have your instrument? Uh, because even though the enemy uh, is against us, uh, the enemy loves the praises of God. Uh, hallelujah, you got to understand that he was over. Uh, uh, praise God, he was the anointed cherub that covered. Uh, he, Satan, I'm talking about Lucifer, the dragon. Uh, uh -huh. Praise God, when it comes to worship, he understands worship. I, I got to go, y'all, but what I want to tell you is that uh, there are three elements to worship. Uh, one element is prayer. Uh, uh, God, praise God then uh, uh, you have the second element which is singing uh, and the third element is 
the word. Uh, this is why throughout our churches you're going to find singing, uh, praying, and preaching. Uh, because this is a part of the structure of worship. Uh, uh, but here Israel is. Uh, they are, have been brought down to Babylon. Uh, and when they get down there, uh, praise God, the Bible said that they hang their harps in the willow trees. Uh, in other words, they have retired their instruments. Uh, they have separated themselves from the praises of God. Uh, because in their mind, uh, we can only praise in a certain place. Uh, at a certain time. Uh, with certain people. Uh, but what God wants us to know is, I'm going to bring you to a place uh, where there there is unfamiliar faces, huh? unfamiliar tendencies. Huh? Oh God, I'm going to bring you to a geographic huh? where you don't even recognize. Huh? You will get lost if you start walking because it is unfamiliar with you. Huh? And this is why Peter warns the present day church huh? and say, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials huh? as though some strange things are happening. Huh? Notice here, children, huh? the Bible said that, that the folk that captured them huh? requested a song from them. Huh? What we have to understand is that when we praise the Lord, uh, and when we worship him, uh, the Lord will visit us. Uh, for the Bible said he inhabits uh, the praise of his people. Uh, oh, y'all remember uh, when Paul and Silas was in the Philippi jail, uh, how at midnight they sang and prayed. Uh, can I preach it here, y'all? Uh, uh, the Bible said that at midnight as they sang and prayed, oh God, that the jail cells came open. Oh God, and the jailer saw the jail cells open, drew out his sword and threatened to kill himself. But Paul said, do yourself no harm, we are all here. But how did y'all doors get open? They said we worship. Let me tell you what's going to change the situation is that the worshipers must learn to worship in strange places. When things have changed, when things are not the same, you got to learn how, how to worship the Lord. Oh God, so they begin to reply, how can we sing Zion songs in a strange land? It may be a strange land, but God has a familiar face. And when we see the face of God, it may be strange all around us. But I know my God, I see it, I recognize. Uh, that he's God, uh, not just in the mountain, uh, but he's God uh, in the valley, uh, in the shadow of death. Uh, he's God, and uh, I want to let somebody know this morning. Uh, I don't care uh, where we are, uh, we need uh, to worship the Lord. Uh, You're ready. 
Father, today, I pray, Lord, for those who are worried about their children, for those who are worried about their marriages, for those that are worried about their health. Father, I pray right now that their faith will look up to you. Their confidence will grow on past testimony that you've already done for them. And if you did it before, you can do it again. Father, I thank you for being God all you're not a man-made God like the idols that men made, the golden calves. Men made cows God, made the sun God, made the moon God. But you're not a man-made God, you're the God that made man. And it's a poor God when the creature creates the creator but it's a great God when the creator creates the creature who is blessed forever I thank you today Father bless your people and as we leave this place whenever your presence go with us, lead us, guide us and direct us in Jesus' name. And we will give you the praise. Give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're out of time. We're not out of message. And we just ask that all of you that have tuned in with us today continue to pray for greater grace. And we're asking you for your support sent to these methods of payments so that the ministry can go forward continue without any lack and I'm asking you today to please remember greater grace we have provided information for you to be able to be a blessing and a support please do not be one of those who expect others to do what you can also do. Make the sacrifice. Make, make the sacrifice. God bless you until next week. We want you to be in prayer for us and we want to do the same for you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you.